Hello and welcome. My name is Taylor Cox from California Eastern Labs. I'm an applications engineer with the MeshConnect product line. Today I'm here to show you our advanced smart energy network demo. If you haven't seen our intermediate smart energy network demo, I recommend that you do so before watching this video. You can find the intermediate demo on our YouTube channel as well as a direct link on the CEL website at www.cel.com. Before we get started, I want to introduce you to the technology and development tools and give you a quick overview of what we will be covering in today's demonstration. The wireless technology we will be showcasing is based on an IEEE 802.15.4 radio running the Zigbee Pro Stack and Smart Energy and Home Automation profiles. The module we are using today is the ZICM357. The ZICM357 is based on the Ember EM357 chipset. The synergy between CEL's Mesh Connect modules and Ember offers a powerful off-the-shelf solution for all Zigbee-based applications. CEL and Ember both offer tools and services to help design and develop your application. Using the CEL Ember-based companion kit allows you to evaluate, design, and develop with CEL modules on the Ember development kit. Let's take a closer look at what we will be covering in today's demonstration. We will learn how to commission a network, provision a network, and we will also run a smart energy network demonstration. Finally, we will touch on debugging and packet inspection using Ember's Insight desktop software. The first thing we need to do is commission and provision our network. In commissioning a network, we essentially are forming a network. After we have created our network, we then have to provision that network such that we can then find the compatible services and devices and permit those devices to join our network. Let's commission and provision our network using the same hardware and software we used in our previous demonstration. First, we need to connect the ESI to the PC using a USB cable and then power on the ESI. We will be simulating the public utility company using a GUI running on the PC. Now that the ESI has been connected and powered, to commission the network we must first establish a connection between the ESI and the GUI using the COM port and test the connection. Once connected, we can switch to advanced mode and then can begin commissioning or forming the network. In basic mode, we can test the network. Finally, we must permit joining to allow devices to connect to our network. Next, let's have our thermostat join our network. First, we must power on the thermostat. Once the thermostat has been powered and initialized, we must press and release a button on the back side of the thermostat to join the network. The thermostat we're showing here has been modified by adding a ZICM357 module. Once joined, we will see the LED illuminate. This can take up to 10 seconds. Here we can see an illuminated LED indicating the thermostat has joined the network. Let's switch back to the GUI and confirm by clicking the Find Nodes button and examine the log window for further details. Next, let's power on our radiant floor heat pump which is being simulated by an evaluation board and a high bright LED on the left hand side of the board. In order to have the pump join the network, we need to press and release a push button and a red LED will illuminate adjacent to the push button indicating success. Finally, we need to provision our network. To provision the network, we must first press and release the same push button on the back of the thermostat. The amber LED will begin to blink and the heat pump hybrid LED will illuminate to indicate it has been turned on. We now have completed the commissioning and provisioning of our network. Let's walk through our smart energy network demonstration. Today we will be simulating a smart energy network from the perspective of a single family home with a radiant floor heating system. Let's take a closer look. Here again we have our graphical user interface that is connected to the ESI via the USB port. Let's just say we are experiencing cold winter and the ESI receives a warning from the public utility company of a potential power overload. 
Since we are connected to the ESI, we can then send commands to the Smart Energy Network, in this case, shed load. For the purpose of this demonstration, let's say we have our thermostat set to 72 degrees with a preset of 70 degrees for the water pump shutoff. Since the set temperature is above 70 degrees, the pump is on, as indicated by this high bright LED. LED on will represent the pump is on, while LED off will represent the pump is off. In this demo, we will shut a load for only one minute and drop the set temperature by 4 degrees. In a real life scenario, it can be minutes or hours and the temperature drop can vary, depending on the severity of the power condition. Now that we're familiar with the hardware, let's shed a load. Here you can see the thermostat dropping its set temperature by 4 degrees and the high bright LED turning off. Since we are dropping below 70 degrees, the thermostat wirelessly turns off the pump before dropping its temperature. After one minute, the thermostat resumes normal operating conditions by raising its set temperature back up by 4 degrees and wirelessly turning the pump back on. We are back to normal, as indicated by the hybrid LED. The ESI can also send a command to cancel a shed load. Let's demonstrate. Here we are shedding load once again. Here you can see the pump is shut down and the set temperature has dropped once again. Let's cancel this shed load command by clicking Cancel Shed Load. Once the cancel command has been received by the thermostat, it will turn the pump back on and raise its set temperature. This concludes our Smart Energy Network demonstration. Now let's take a look at the debugging and packet inspection across our network. Here we have the hardware from the previous demo. In addition, you will see an Ethernet switch and the Ember inside adapter otherwise known as the ISA3, which is used for sniffing the over-the-air packets. We first need to connect the Ember ISA3 to the Ethernet switch and then to the PC using a USB cable. The PC is also connected to the same Ethernet switch. Also connected to the Ember ISA3 is an evaluation board with the sniffer application pre-programmed, which must be powered. Now that we have our hardware set up for debugging, let's dive into the inside desktop software. Ember's Insight Desktop software is a network analyzer that allows rapid programming and network debugging. By connecting the Ember ISA3 and a packet sniffer, we can then analyze packets and debug our network over the air. Let's demonstrate. The first thing we need to do is go into our adapters pane. We are going to then expand our default group folder to see which adapters are available in our network. As you can see here, we have our ISA3 adapter listed. You may have multiple adapters listed here depending on how many adapters you have across your network. To connect to the ISA3 adapter, you need to right click on the adapter and choose connect. To begin capturing or sniffing packets, right click again and choose start capture. So right now, our sniffer is actively sniffing our network for any activity or packets being transmitted. There currently isn't any activity on our network as we don't have any of our devices powered. We will first power the ESI and momentarily we will see the ESI appear in the live pane. The ESI has now appeared on our network with an address of 0000 and various packets have appeared in the log windows with regards to route discovery and link status. Next we will power up the thermostat and just like the ESI another node will appear in the live pane. The thermostat has now appeared with an address of B114. Examining the log window yields similar entries, route discoveries, route requests, Zigbee cluster library entries, etc. Finally, we will turn on the water pump. As you can see, another node has appeared with a node address of E9EC, and the LED light simulating the water pump has been illuminated. Just like the prior nodes, we see similar entries in the Insight Desktop log window. Now that all our devices are powered, we are able to monitor all devices on our network. Let's shed load and examine the packets being transmitted across the network. As you can see in the log window, the shed load command has been transmitted. Now let's cancel the shed load command and stop the capture so that we can take a closer look at the data being transmitted through the network. Here we are scrolling through the log window to view the packet history. Let's stop and examine a packet. In the lower right corner, the contents of the packet and payload is visible. This will allow one to verify that the desired data is being properly transmitted over the air. 
We are able to view the packet data in this demonstration because we've added the default encryption key, as shown here. This allows for the decryption of the packet and for debugging and packet inspection to occur. In a real-world application, the security keys would be unique to each smart energy network. Now let's perform a replay of this demonstration. First, we must make sure we have the first entry in our log selected as our starting point. We will then select Start Replay off the Edit menu of the Insight Desktop tool. As you can see, data is being transmitted between nodes. Here you can see the ESI address 0000 exchanging data with the thermostat address B114 and vice versa. Finally, we will see the heat pump joining our network and exchange data with the thermostat. As you recall in the demo, we shed load. Here in the paused log window, you can see the Zigbee cluster library load control event command for a shed load event. Likewise, a cancel shed load would look similar, but have slightly different payload data. This concludes our demonstration of the Smart Energy Networking demo. As the simulation replay comes to an end, I would like to thank you for spending the time to watch this video. To find out more on CEL MeshConnect products, please visit us at www.cel.com forward slash meshconnect.